Our journey takes us from the plains of southwest India at Mechupalayam to the cool heights of Utokamund, known as Snuti Uti, which is some 7,228 feet atop the Blue Hills, the Nilgiri Mountains in southwest India. They are the original home of the Toda people but were adopted and developed by the British Raj to provide the cooling relief of a hill station. The sturdy blue X-Class steam engines push and pull their trains on the 46 km meter gauge rack assisted railway over the proudly named Nilgiri Mountain Railway. The first portion of the line as far as Kunur was opened in 1899 and the extension to Uti was completed in 1908. As part of the Indian Hill Railways Tour organised by the Railway Touring Company in 2012, a small group of enthusiasts were privileged to ride in a special first class coach attached to the daily service train to Uti. We leave on relatively level ground, 1 in 40 gradient, but after 8 kilometres at Kalar station the rack system comes into play between there and Kanua over an average gradient of 1 in 12. On our journey we should traverse 250 bridges and 16 tunnels during our trip. The longest tunnel near Uti is 150 yards in length.
flag waves and we're away Vase, Nanda Baranda Alcaga.
As we approach our first station, Kellar, and the start of the rack system, we get a glimpse of the bulb horn, which is the source of the background noise hitherto. The central rail of the rack system is clearly visible in front of us now, just to the left of the yellow signage.
engine uses the rack now. Yes, yes. Direction Marie. Uh, and the Marasan. And the Rindu Maran, there is the Gandhi from. You know, it's like a kilometer. And do you control the rack? Yes. Yes. For man, a third bit more, sir. No, no. Man, bad thing, sir. Ah, bad thing. Ah. Bison. Yes, bison. The virus bison. No tigers. No tigers. Deer and deer. Tiger also come. Any day. No elephants. Oh yes, elephants yes, sometimes come. <laughs> <laughs> Sometime come, crash the track, stop the train, that will move in or will let. Good state of repair. Very good re state of repair. Very tidy.
ஒரு காலத்தில் ஃபாரஸ்ட் வந்து அதிகங்க ஃபாரஸ்டர் வந்து நைட் ஆனால் பெரிய டார்ச் ஒன்று வச்சு அடிக்க அவங்க இந்த தோட்டத்தையெல்லாம் பார்க்கணும் சார் காட்டெல்லாம் இப்போ யாரும் வர்றது இந்த வைல்ட் அனிமல்ஸ் எலிபெண்ட்டுக்கு பின்னால் யாரும் பயப்படுறாங்க யாரும் வர்றது இல்லைப்போ ரெண்டாவது அந்த டைமில் இந்த சந்தன கட்டை ஆளுங்க ரொம்ப வந்து லோலாய் பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தாங்க இப்போ அந்த இதையுமே கேன்சல் பண்ணிட்டானுங்க அவனுங்க அப்போல்லாம் இந்த காட்டை அவ்வளோ பத்திரமா அவன் பாதுகாக்கணும் பெரிய நாய் கூட இருக்கும் சார் சும்மா ஜவான் கூட இருக்கு அந்த நாய் அந்த மவுண்டன் நம்ம போக மாட்டோம் சார் டக்குன்னு அப்படியே ஒரு கட்டடிச்சு வளைஞ்சிருவோம் அந்த மலை இருக்கு பாத்தீங்களா அதுக்கு போக மாட்டோம் ஆமா ஆமா இந்த மலையில பூந்துருவோம் அந்த பிரிட்ஜ் பாத்தீங்களா அப்படியே நேரா பாருங்க பிரிட்ஜ் ரெட் கலர் முப்பதாவது பிரிட்ஜ் அது முப்பதாவது பிரிட்ஜ் கரெக்டா பதினஞ்சு நிமிஷம் அந்த இடத்துக்கு போறதுக்கு அப்போ ராமச்சந்திர டிரைவர் காலத்துல கரெக்டா மே அங்கிருந்து
we are stopping at the station at the mouth of tunnel number three which is 12 and three quarter kilometers into our journey. The station site which provides a respite for the engine and the opportunity to water as well as respite for the passengers is named Adderley. Unfortunately the weather provides a rather misty backdrop to this particular station so we hope for clearer weather further up the line. in the winter.
new bridge. No, that change at the steel. Ah, oh, change, change the steel. One day, yes, we can. Silver, this one you change. Yeah. Yeah. The coal fired engine is traveling here.
அது உளுந்து செத்து போச்சு சார் தோனி காய்ச்சி கீழே அப்படியே We've now reached Hillgrove Station which is 18 kilometers from our start point and is at a height of 3580 feet. Thank you. 
What are you? The next part of the journey is, is how far we now get our first opportunity to see the critical elements of the rack system. We've seen the railway set up, but this is the equipment which is on the underside of the locomotive and the coaches. The silver coloured gear engages with the rack on the track and the remaining elements are linked to the train's transmission system. And that's how it works. Both a driving mechanism and a braking mechanism. Also, interestingly, because the train is operating in reverse, the leading coach, which is ours, has a brake man and a driver, both of whom have responsibility for the driving of the train. And between each coach is a flag man and a brake man. So the manning of the train in total is quite significant, which undoubtedly adds to the cost, but increases the safety. Both the passengers and the locomotive need to take on water. Number relation, later, later, later,
We have now reached Runnymede station and the gentleman in the foreground in the light coloured shirt is called Mr Natarajan who is a real enthusiast for this line and is managing trustee of the Heritage Steam Chariot Trust which is looking to increase the profile of the line, to raise its profile and to see it in the context of both trade and tourism. He was a real enthusiast and was our guest at dinner that evening.
Children and railways, particularly steam railways, seem to go together. And along here on the left, a little bunch of perfectly dressed young school children waving and shouting enthusiastically as the steam engine and its train passes by. And there were equal greetings from the passengers on the train.
we occasionally get glimpses across there on the hillside of the tea plantations which of course become a feature of the higher altitudes as the line reaches the cooler areas which are suitable for tea growing and which course the development of the area and the railway line in the first place.
After some 27 kilometres, we arrive at Kanur Junction, where we should change to diesel traction for the remaining 19 kilometres of our journey. But before that, we shall have a look round the steam shed and the very active work which goes into maintaining these key steam locomotives. We've now gained access to the shed and there must be four or five different locomotives in the shed. There's two of them there and there's a couple more in front of them. There we are, there's another two. In the foreground you can see the rack gears that we were looking at earlier on. So they must be subject to quite significant wear. I think in a moment, oh there's a locomotive with its coupling rods disconnected. You can see it's a twin bogey locomotive to cope with the tight curves. Some opportunities for health and safety comment there. The sparks flying from an angle grinder. Oh, close your eyes. Keep your head well back. So the works looks pretty busy and seems to have clear targets and plenty of initiative to keep the whole thing on the road or at least keep the whole thing on the rails. That's the line back in the direction of our start point. A slight incline into the station. Shades of the British Empire. There's a, a crane manufactured by Cowens and Sheldon who were a very famous crane manufacturer based in Carlisle so that one is a long way from home and there's the maker's plate confirming what I've just said Carlisle England and there's the crane in situ just alongside the downline from Uti And there's one of our first views of the diesel traction which also plies its trade around and through this particular station. And the signal box just in front.
railway enthusiasts tend to use the expression stuffed and mounted for locomotives that are taken out of service and just put on display and that's exactly what's happened to that loco and a couple of the water towers on the two platforms and another diesel And coming up the line now is the steam locomotive which drew our train into the station. She reversed down the line and she's now coming back having passed through the points and she's coming back onto the shed. And now it's time for us to leave Kunur with Uti our destination. We should be back tomorrow but we're now on our way diesel hauled through this quite significantly sized little town. I don't know quite what the main source of employment is here but certainly the railways adds to that employment opportunity nor may that continue
we're very soon running through an avenue of eucalyptus trees straight growing Australian trees there are some concerns in India that the eucalyptus is flourishing rather too well and taking water supply but they seem to be given the opportunity to continue to grow here Does the steam train come up here sometimes? Yes. Ah, good. This is Kati, 6,864 feet above sea level, distance of 38 kilometers up the line and about 8 kilometers from our ultimate destination. Pleasant little station with some staff amenity quarters to the left, camping facilities and what have you. Very pleasant place to be I should think. Very much cooler than it was down on the plains, 5,000 odd feet below.
little further on this station is called Lovedale with its uh, quaintly organized point levers there still no doubt they do the job opportunity for more leg stretching and then a sign indicating the very important UNESCO heritage site designation for the whole of this line which undoubtedly will provide some protection from what would otherwise be premature closure unfortunately hanging out of the window of the coach I managed only to film the back of Alain our French friend's head and the smoke from the diesel but uh, all I can say is enjoy the treetops and then we move onwards and very close now to Uti through two quite splendid archways this is the first of the archways and another one follows relatively quickly This is tunnel number 16, the longest and last tunnel on the line at 451 feet. So there is after all light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to be 
and at last we look again at the front of our train settled into the platform at Uti another operating remnant of British manufacture set of scales manufactured in Birmingham and still in use and there's Mr. Natarajan again eloquently expressing the merits of the line to a local radio and television crew unfortunately we shall have to look elsewhere for a translation but his enthusiasm shines through the language barrier strength to his arm and a complete change of scene now the serenity of our little hotel complex in Uti where we spent a very pleasant couple of days in what was also dormitory facilities at one time for the people engaged in the tea industry in this part of India as we look at still more still images of the hotel complex and very pleasant it was too tomorrow we will have the opportunity to travel the line in the other direction we should go by car down to Kanua again and then we should run back down the line with the engines not working quite as hard but being restrained by the rack mechanism but before that we shall have a very pleasant evening meal with our friend Mr. Natarajan as guest of honour and then we shall take to our beds at the end of a long hard day and look forward to tomorrow. So until then I sign off. <laughs>